This is Dave Keyes, and this is the core of the on-site structure um, module that uh, is important to understand. It's important to understand how different pages on the website relate to each other and how they are positioned in terms of links, external links to the website. And failing to create these internal and external links and validation signals means that a website is going to rank less effectively or not at all in Google search results. So we'll start out with a little bit of purpose here. We've got a home page right here represented by the Red House. And this home page is primarily to validate the identity of the website and the owner or company or entity behind that website. That's primarily what Google wants to do with the home page is to identify what Google considers a brand or an identity. So we usually call that brand identity. We're not trying to create a brand like Goodyear where you fly a blimp over a stadium to get people to remember the brand. We're getting Google to remember the brand identity of a certain website being associated with an entity that Google has confidence is real and not simply contrived in order to get a website to rank for some product that maybe deserves or doesn't deserve to rank as high as something that's authenticated. So the brand identity is validated by external sites, like you see in the left, Google, Google Properties, Reviews, Maps, and something we won't delve into right now, but Google Stacks and then social validation networks like Yelp, uh, maybe Yellow Pages, things are, that are social or well-known websites that are associated with a particular kind of topic or brand identity. Uh, for example, if you're a real estate agent, then you would expect to find references to this website on uh, Association of Realtors or Zillow or popular real estate blogs and networks, uh, Active Rain, perhaps, things like that. So the uh, validation comes from these external, well-known, high-authority websites, as well as general websites like, like a link from Better Business Bureau or a link from Forbes magazine mentioning the, uh, uh, the brand or something like that. So we'll get to that, but let's look at the structure of the website and the rest of the purposes. So Google looks at a website and then the pages that are shown to be closest to the home page, and that's done by a number of methods, including the URL structure, the way that the web address is formed, as well as internal linking. And so we end up with established prime or main pages of the website, like maybe this business has property management, maybe it has uh, an about page and it has a page for its agents and then sub pages for each agent, and maybe it has a site map and certainly should have a site map or a hub page to direct people to the most important parts of the website from that page to revalidate other pages. And then it will have a blog oftentimes especially in real estate, and it will have, in a case of real estate again, main topics, um, main areas of coverage, main product lines, that kind of thing. And that's represented here and, and here. Now, once that's established, then you create other pages over time that validate these pages as being of primary importance. So you might create a blog post, for example, and you have uh, a topic about Snowmass, Snowmass real estate, Snowmass community. Now, what will happen is you want to link from this page and you want to link back to a page that it's about, which is not the home page and not itself and not the blog home page, uh, but you want to link to the page that's of topical relevance. So we've got a snowmass topic. We're going to connect that to the snowmass page like this. So then you can see that uh, we, we've got a connection here.
going back to this topical page by a link. Now the link can say more homes in Snowmass Village and that more homes in Snowmass Village links back to this page or any number of, of semantically relevant terms. Look at additional Snowmass condos. Again, back to this page. Snowmass topic two then. You write a topic later on about Snowmass. And again, you do the same thing, linking back to the topical page of most relevance, which is going to be the Snowmass real estate page. Now the same thing happens for this other topic for Aspen is you link back to, of course, the Aspen page like that. And then the next Aspen topic, same thing. You link back to the Aspen real estate page. And that's how that works. Now these sub pages, you know, from the blog is one type of sub page. It, it's a post type in WordPress. Google looks at it much in the same way as sub pages. So the function is the same. If you create Aspen Colorado Real Estate and then you have a, a sub page for Aspen's condos, then this page will link back both in the menu system and with content on the page with specific links going back to this page. So you have both the menu system link and you can also create connections from internal links back to the Aspen page. And that's how that works. That's internal linking in a nutshell. So it's important to keep in mind, especially when creating blog posts, what does this blog post support? And then choose or create keywords that are semantically relevant to that topic and link that, that blog post to the uh, relevant page. So now we have Snowmass Topic 3, for example, and we're going to link that back over to, again, the Snowmass page, like that, okay? That's the essence of what we're trying to do. So when a question arises about what to link a blog post to, that's what to link it to, is to the most relevant main page on the website. Um, maybe a blog post is relevant to Snowmass Village Real Estate, and it's also relevant to old Snowmass Real Estate, for example, or Snowmass Village Condos. And if you have that as a sub-page, you can also link your topic page on the blog to that uh, third-level page, like this. So then we're linking to Condos for Sale, and we created that connection as you can see here, okay? So that's the essence of what to link to.